<laughs> uh, let's open up this. So that's what's missing. Good morning. Okay, let's let me get this up and then we get started. Awesome. Okay, so today uh, we're going to be kind of applying some of those sig fig things. Wow, everyone's saying good morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, we're going to be uh, kind of applying those sig fig rules that we learned yesterday. So remember that any measurement that we're going to be taking uh, in chemistry class or in science is going to come with some degree of uncertainty just based on how good our kind of uh, device to measure was. Um, and so it's important that we carry that information along uh, when we use those numbers. So, uh, it, you know, if you end up using a crappy instrument and all your other instruments are great, you know, your results are really going to be kind of determined by the crappy instrument. It's like the weakest link, you know. Uh, so uh, we're going to see we have a couple of rules of what to do uh, when we are going to be working with sig figs. And uh, the first, you know, kind of set of things that we're going to be dealing with is uh, multiplication and division. Um, and honestly, this is going to be the um, kind of operation we're going to be using the most often in chemistry. You know, I would say it's probably like 90 to 95% of the stuff we do, good morning, Dominique, uh, is going to be um, multiplication and division. Uh, there will be some things that we'll do with addition and subtraction, and then, you know, we'll do a little bit of logarithms right at the end. But by and large, everything is going to be multiplied and divided uh, here. And so... Um, we have rules for what to do um, when we're multiplying or dividing numbers that have sig figs. Um, and that those rules are going to be that uh, when we are multiplying and dividing, we keep the smallest number uh, of sig figs for... Um, Let's just keep it like that. Um, and this is going to be based on all numbers that we would multiply or divide. So uh, we're going to do a couple of examples and we're going to see how we can kind of use these sig fig rules. So when we're multiplying or dividing, we're going to keep the smallest number of sig figs. So we're going to be looking at all of the numbers that we're multiplying and dividing, and we're going to go and say, okay, you know, this one has three sig figs, this one has four sig figs. When I multiply them, my answer should have three sig figs. And we're going to talk about how to round numbers uh, based on that. So let's go, go ahead and do an example. Yeah, let's do this one. So let's say you've got these two numbers uh, to work with and you are multiplying them together. Uh, if you go ahead and just plug them into your calculator or phone or whatever the heck you're using now. 32.6 times 10.21. I use Google, of course, as my calculator. Uh, if you just throw that stuff in your calculator, you are going to get 332.846 uh, out of your um, calculator. So um, let's go ahead and look at these numbers and see how many sig figs uh, they have. So this first number, whatever it is, uh, looks to have three sig figs, right? They're all non-zero numbers. We don't even have to think about it. They're just all three of them uh, are going to be significant. If we look at the uh, next one, we should see that that's going to have four sig figs. We do have one zero in there, but it is a zero in between numbers. Uh, and zeros in between, remember, are always significant. 
So if we um, look at the rule that we've written there above, it tells us that we need to keep the smallest number of sig figs for our answer. Uh, and so that appears to be three sig figs, right? So we have to round this guy. Um, and when we're going to be rounding a number, we're always going to want to kind of keep the leftmost uh, sig fi or numbers, digits, whatever you want to call them. Uh, if we're going to look at three sig figs here, we're going to keep the leftmost three. So those are the three we are going to keep. When we're rounding, though, we have to look at the number after that. So we know... We need three sig figs, so we have to round based off the fourth one. So, uh, you know, you would just be um, looking at the next one, whatever it is. If you had five sig figs, you would look at the sixth one, uh, for example. You're just going to look one more space over than all the numbers you're going to keep, and you're going to round based on that. And uh, maybe, you know... If you remember, if your number is 0 to 4, you just round down. If it's 5 through 9, you round up. So as a result, we are going to round this number to 333. Because that uh, next number was an 8. Because it's an 8, we are going to round up, which is going to bump that 2 up into a 3. Uh, and that would be our answer there, 333, uh, with the proper amount of sig figs. All right, let's do a couple more, perhaps. All right, so first thing you can do, just plug everything into your calculator. Let's get a numerical answer first, and then we can worry about the sig figs. Divided by 8.9264. Uh, this is what I get out of this nonsense, right? Um, obviously, we cannot use 200 sig figs. Uh, and yeah, that's absolutely what we're going to get here. So uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, all the sig figs for the numbers that we have. We have two sig figs for the six. We have three sig figs there. And then we have five sig figs for the bottom number. We have to look at everything we're multiplying and dividing here. Uh, so uh, the two is going to be the winner, uh, the smallest number of sig figs. So for sure, we're going to keep the eight and the one. Those are the two we're looking at. So we're going to look at this next number now and indeed see that that is between 0 to 4, so we're going to round down. When we round down, that means we just kind of get rid of it. So our answer there will be 81. Uh, it seems that all these numbers have been, you know, rounded to the ones place. Uh, let's try and get something where we don't have that. Uh, how about this? Let's do um, 204 times... <laughs> over 0 0.982 yeah we'll do that hopefully this number will be not something that rounds in the ones place uh, I don't think it will be because we're going to have a pretty big number here not 82 okay. doing this stuff you get 3367.45417. Three, three, five, 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 whatever. Long number. Looking at the sig figs, we're going to have three sig figs, four sig figs, and three sig figs again. So we're going to want three sig figs. So uh, we're going to keep those three. So we're going to look at the next one and determine that we're going to need to round up. What's important here 
you can't just say 337. Well, that's the correct sig figs. Don't forget that this is 3,367. So we're going to need to put in a placeholder zero there to make sure that we uh, keep our um, proper number, uh, you know, that we have it in the correct uh, magnitude. So that placeholder zero will be very important. You know, you don't want to just say, okay, I'm going to round it and now it's gone and, you know, now we're just 337. Like, yes, you'd have the right number of sig figs, but now you've lost, you know, 90% of your number. It's gone. So don't forget placeholder zeros if necessary. If we were to, oh, yeah, so we round it up, we would have to make it into 70. If we round it down, we would make it 60 instead for those last two digits. Um, and so uh, just don't forget those. Um, one way to get around this, of course, is to just put everything in scientific notation. Um, if we just did that to start, if we put 3.36745 dot, 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 times 10 to the third power, uh, we could just keep our three numbers and say we have 3.37 times 10 to the third. That would uh, kind of get rid of that potential um, ambiguity there. So um, that may be one thing that you want to do. Just depends uh, how comfortable, comfortable you are with all these things. All right. Sometimes um, you're going to get answers that um, you're going to need to round uh, that you might not be able to do. For example, let's say you got the number 1004 and you needed to round to three sig figs. Sometimes there's not an easy way to do this. Uh, if you see there, okay, yes, we're going to end up with the numerical value of 1,000 based on rounding rules. However, 1,000 only has one sig fig. If we were to put a decimal in there, we would end up with four sig figs. Uh, and we cannot, of course, do that. We can't just say it's 100. You know, that's not going to work uh, for sure. Definitely not, because that's that now it's just a completely different number. Uh, what we would have to do in this case is we would have to put it into scientific notation. Um, that would be the only way to get this number to be uh, three sig figs because uh, we can't just say, yeah, you know, this one's significant, but not the next zero, you know, unfortunately it doesn't work that way. So um, we would have to use scientific notation uh, to express the proper number of sig figs for this number if we had to round it. All right. Uh, so on your, your homework worksheet, uh, there will be practice problems for this sort of thing. Um, and then there's plenty in the book you can work on as well. Um, we're going to do addition subtraction rules, and then we're going to uh, kind of combine them. So we'll have more practice with this uh, here as well. All right, but are there any uh, questions so far? Uh, anything we've done um, going on with some of these examples or, or whatever? Um, you know, just as always, just throw them out there. Just, um, let's do one more. I'm going to put some units now, just so we uh, can remember. Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. Yeah, let's put a dot there. Yeah, why not? OK. Just so we remember um, what to do with units uh, if we're multiplying or dividing numbers. If we do this stuff, 6.2 times 80 times 0.43, we would get 213.28. The unit for this, if we take centimeters and multiply them by centimeters by centimeters, 
we end up with centimeters cubed. Don't forget that if we multiply units, they just square or cube or whatever. Um, if we divide units, they would just go underneath uh, in the denominator. Um, so just don't forget units do exist as well. We'll be introducing those uh, later today, perhaps. Um, and so uh, it'll be very important that we keep track of our units. Um, notice, though, this number will need to be rounded to the appropriate number of sig figs. We have 2, 2, and 3, so we're going to need 2. So that should be 210 cubic centimeters would be our answer there. Note that we uh, looked at the most uh, kind of the biggest sig figs, and then we looked at the next digit. It's a 3, so we're going to round down. Uh, so we get 210. Don't forget that 0 there is a placeholder. If you really wanted, you could also say 2.1 times 10 squared centimeters cubed. You could totally do that. I don't really care. Um, if on a homework, by the way, rule of thumb here, if it's over a thousand or well, let's say 10,000. And when 10,000s will be consistent here. Um, this is where we're going to want to put stuff in scientific notation. Uh, generally, if it's going to be a big number or a small number, that's when we worry about putting things in scientific notation. Um, just as an ease of kind of like reading, I don't want to be counting zeros and be like, okay, is this, you know, six zeros after the decimal point where you're putting your answer? Um, it's kind of a rule of thumb here. So if your number is over 10,000 or less than one ten thousandth, put your answer in scientific notation. Otherwise, I don't care. You can put it in regular notation or scientific uh, if it's somewhere in between those. Two sig figs. So, um, the three numbers that we used to multiply to get that. Um, we had two sig figs uh, and three sig figs. Those were the, the numbers that we had there. Um, and so because we had two sig figs, we have to round our number to two sig figs. Uh, and so that's why we're going to get 210, because the number 210 only has two sig figs. So we're communicating to uh, other people, whoever they are, uh, that our instrument for measuring the centimeters only had two sig figs, so uh, that's why we're going to have that there. So we need two sig figs here. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah, so um, that is going to be how we're going to let other people know how confident we are in our answers by using our sig figs. Yep, placeholder zero there uh, for that. Or if you put it inside the notation, you don't have to worry about the placeholder zero. Cool. All right, let's see here. Shall we deal with the next one? Oh, I don't know how to spell subtraction. There, I kind of fixed it. No, I didn't. When we deal with addition and subtraction, um, the rules are, let's see, what's the best way to describe this? Um, trickier. <laughs> uh, you're gonna be amazing your math teachers uh, by telling them that if you have the number 100 and adding it to the number 1, perhaps, uh, you get 100. And your math teacher will do this uh, at you. Um, but in chemistry, we're going to see stuff like this a lot, where adding things doesn't quite make sense. Um, 
at least in terms of like mathematics, but in terms of keeping your uh, value of significance, um, it will matter for sure. Uh, the reason for this is if we were to look at these two numbers, um, let's let's put this in, in context here. So I think that the example I used in the book was was like an elephant and a, a ball that the elephant is, is going to be on. If you think the elephant weighed, um, I don't know, like 11,432 pounds, that's our elephant. Okay, I'm going to try and draw an elephant. Okay, big ol' head, big ol' ears. Here's the little snoot. Looks like a dying mouse, but uh, that's an elephant. This drawing would be on the test. Make sure you understand it's an elephant. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and let's say, I don't know, there's a, a little bee that comes along. Got a little stingy. Uh, that's a bee. And that bee goes and lands on the elephant on the scale. Uh, and that bee weighs uh, 0 0.121 pounds. I have no idea how much a bee weighs. That's actually probably pretty heavy for a bee. Um, but uh, whatever, we don't care. Uh, so let's say that elephant uh, or that bee goes and lands on the elephant. Uh, we're going to see that the scale that's weighing that elephant is probably not going to pick up that bee. The difference is just too small for that scale to register. Um, in fact, we do not know what comes after this. We don't know what these digits are that come after the two uh, for our elephant. So if we were to have a decimal there and some numbers, we don't know what those are. And because those are uncertain, if we add these two numbers up, 11432.121. You know, we, we technically do not know you know, all of those would be uncertain because this too, in fact, is uncertain. Remember that when we're measuring something, uh, the last number is always the uncertain one where we've kind of taken our guess, you know, hey, it's probably this one. Um, and so, you know, the, the scales do that as well. You know, they, they will kind of make their best estimate as to what the last digit is going to be. Um, and so because we can't have four uncertain things as part of this number, we can only have the last digit be uh, uncertain. That tells us that our answer would still be 11,432. In this case, the unit was pounds. But um, because we do not know what all those decimals were for the elephant, there is no way we can include the decimals for the B. Um, this doesn't work because uh, you can't have four uncertain digits. You know, that would kind of completely undermine everything you're doing if you were to keep using those numbers, uh, you know, perpetually. So... Um, despite the fact that indeed the bee will be adding more mass onto this elephant, uh, you know, not gonna, it's not gonna work for our, our scientific purposes. So um, we're gonna see that we are going to uh, need to look where the last, uh, the least significant digit is. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and do some examples, and then we can look at this a little bit more. If we take 189 and add it to, here, let's, let's put some stuff here. Let's take two numbers here. With the, um, multiplication division, we care about uh, the number of sig figs. We do not care about that here. Uh, for addition subtraction, we don't care how many sig figs there are uh, at all. We care about where the significance is. 
Let's just go ahead and do the math real quick here. So six, three, seven, nine, nine, one. Okay, so there's our math done. However, we have to look at these two numbers. We're gonna see the last significant digit for the first number is the two. The last significant digit uh, for the second number is the six, right? Those numbers both have five sig figs, but we can see kind of where those sig figs are once we line them up like this. Um, and at that point, we have to kind of cut off our number at the least significant digit. Or uh, in blue, least significant means the uh, kind of leftmost. So we are, we're looking at kind of these arrows here that we've drawn. We're going to look at the one that's on the left the most. The one that's farthest to the left is the 2, right? The 2 is more left than the 6 is. And as a result, we're going to be cutting off our number after that 2. Because the 2 is the least significant digit that we have uh, in these two numbers. And so that's where we're going to be cutting it off. We're going to see that we are going to keep everything that's going to be on the left side of that line. And we are going to round away whatever is going to be on the right side. So if, you know, let's say we had uh, two more digits, whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. We would still be rounding it in the same spot uh, because... I'm sorry, we don't need the second arrow there. Um, we would still be rounding in the same place because that 2 there is going to be what uh, drives it. So you're just looking at all the numbers you're adding and subtracting, and you're going to choose the least significant digit to determine uh, your rounding there. So, um, let's see, purple. We're keeping these ones for sure. We're keeping everything that's on the left side of that line. And we're now going to look at this next number to determine our rounding. So because it's a 6, we are going to round up, which means our answer here is going to be 199.74, whatever the units were uh, for this particular number. We're going to do quite a few examples of this because I know this is a bit bizarre, um, but we'll see how it's going to work. Alrighty. So that would be with the proper rounding there. All right, how about this one? So when we're adding and subtracting, we want to go ahead and look at where our sig last significant digits are uh, in the number. And you kind of want to line them up um, kind of based on, you know, uh, you know, you'd put the, the ones place in a column, the tens place, hundreds place, you know, all vertically aligned. If we go ahead and look at these numbers, uh, we're going to see that that one there is going to be our last significant digit. Uh, it's the number 100, uh, numerically speaking, but because there's no decimal, those trailing zeros don't count for us. So, because that one is going to be our least significant digit, that's where we're going to be rounding our number to. So, we, we're still going to just add like normal. We would do all this fun stuff. We get 398.15. However, we know that we have to keep that 3, and we're going to round away the stuff on the other side. So we're going to keep the 3, and we're going to round based on that 9, which is going to give us the answer of 400. 
Uh, don't forget that's 398 that we are rounding up. So we are going to end up with 400 there. Uh, you'll need those placeholders because um, that's um, kind of the magnitude of our number again. Isn't this exciting math that doesn't make sense? Hooray. You do not need a decimal there. If you were to put a decimal, now that number has three sig figs, um, which will change the significance of your number. So this number, whatever it is, is only significant to the hundreds place. So therefore, our answer must also be only significant to the hundreds place. If we were to put a decimal there, it becomes significant to the ones place, uh, which will then give it three sig figs uh, that will not be carrying around uh, the correct kind of information. Fortunately for us, uh, we don't do too much addition or subtraction in chemistry, um, but I suppose it is important to learn the rules regardless. It's exciting, I know. Let's do a couple more. Uh, um, but whatever, we'll just subtract all this stuff. I don't know how to subtract. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> it's been a while. Okay, three and an eight. Uh, <laughs> 210 there was subtracting. So, oh my gosh, I don't know how to subtract. This is embarrassing. 42.6, I'm just gonna calculate it. Okay, there we go. It's another eight. Uh, 3, 42, 24. It's a 7. No, it's not. The calculator has trying to bamboozle me. Navy lime. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that's my embarrassing can't do mental math for a second, you know, brain fart. But that's okay. So let's go ahead and look at these three numbers that we're subtracting. Uh, the rule is the same for addition. We're going to look at our significant numbers here. Our last significant digit. Yeah, I know. The borrowing is tough when we're not like writing it out. I haven't done subtraction in my head in so long. So forget it. Yeah, I was trying to think it's 9 minus 1. That's right. Okay. Very good. So uh, with this, we're going to want to draw the line now here. So we saw that the six was going to be the least significant digit there. Uh, so we're going to, if you want to put this in words, that's significant to the tenths place. That's to the to the hundredths hundredths. This is significant to the thousandths. Is there a D in thousands? Who knows? Who cares? Um, but because the tenths is the least significant one of those three, that's the one we're going to do. If you like to do this verbally like that, uh, that would work as well. I like to do it kind of visually, uh, but, you know, whatever works. Uh, so our number should be significant to the tenths place. That's what our answer should be. And that's what this line is going to be doing. It's going to indicate for us, yes, we're keeping these three, including that tenths place, and we're going to round based on the next one. And so doing so, uh, we're going to get 24.4 uh, uh, would be our final answer there. So whichever one is the least significant, that's the one we're, we're looking at. 
Uh, some people like to do it like points from the decimal. Um, that can work, but it's tougher when you use when you're using big numbers. Uh, like if you look at that first number, it has one decimal point. The second number has two decimal points. The third number has three decimal points. Uh, and you would say, okay, well, one of them, one is the smallest of that, so our answer should have one decimal point. And that, that works. That totally works. Um, but when you get into bigger numbers, like what do you do with this 400? How many decimal points does that have? Negative two? Um, you know, it's tough. So, uh, yeah, fun. Hooray! I told you this stuff would give you nightmares. You didn't believe me. Um, but here we are. So um, that's where we're going to be kind of uh, dealing with our rounding for adding and subtracting. Um, yeah, we're going to do it. Okay. Let's just put a little note here. Um, if we are adding units, uh, the unit doesn't change. So if we had, uh, you know, 10.2 grams plus 0 0.8 grams, uh, we would get 11.0 grams. The unit doesn't change. Um, so we don't have to worry about the units changing or anything like that. Um, however, if you are going to add units, uh, they have to be the same unit. That's another thing to, to keep in mind. So you can't add grams and kilograms together. Uh, it's not going to work. They all have to be the same unit. For multiplication and division, we can multiply and divide whatever units we want. They don't necessarily have to be the same. But for addition and subtraction, they do. They must be the same unit if you're going to be adding them together. Um, for multiply or divide, uh, we would just do the same thing with the units. So if we uh, were to take 10.2 grams. I don't know how we're going to get grams squared, but whatever. Let's just do that for some reason. Don't quite know what a gram squared would be, but that's okay. With this, we get, uh, looks like we need one sig fig, so it's just going to be eight. We would just square our units. We would just multiply them across. If we did 10.2 grams divided by something like that, our units don't have to be the same. And in fact, these are different quantities that we'll learn about. Uh, looks like we're going to need two sig figs there. We would just keep our units. If we're dividing the units, they would just stay, you know, keep along. Grams divided by centimeters cubed is just grams divided by centimeters cubed. Uh, if we're multiplying grams times grams for some reason, we would get square grams, which is not a quantity that makes sense, but for the mathematical purposes, that's how uh, units work. All right, um, one last, uh, no, 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 let's, let's do some uh, combined stuff. You know, maybe let's take uh, 30 seconds to like calm ourselves down because uh, I realize there's a lot of bizarre things happening with these uh, addition and subtraction. So before we start combining addition and subtraction with multiplication division, um, let's rest for a sec. Put on some nice music. You know, why is that 10? Uh, two sig or one sig fig, that's why. So technically you get 12.75, but... <clears throat> Three sig figs, one sig fig. Our answer needs to have one sig fig. Isn't that the worst? Sig figs just ruin everything. Especially if something is one sig fig, forget it. It's just completely, there goes everything that we uh, ever dreamed about and hoped for in the world. 
ruined by sig figs. Yeah. It is terrible. Uh, that'll be due Sunday. Uh, if I've not put that on yours, I'll, I'll, check, I'll double check that I've put that due date for Sunday. But it'll be due the 31st at midnight. So, but the next one will be due next week. So you'll, I think you'll only have the lab simulation and then the um, uh, Sig Figs uh, worksheet that'll be due on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Something to put in Discord, I think, honestly. And then people can uh, DM you and, you know, work together. That's just fine. All right, a couple things when we're combining operations. Don't forget our order of operations, right? Uh, some people call it PEMDAS, some people call it Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. Uh, remember that what's important here for us, uh, you know, we have parentheses. We're not really going to have exponents here. Let's ignore that for now. And then after that we have addition subtraction. So um, parentheses come first. So um, we're going to work with this. OK, so um, with rounding, do not round until the very end. And now here's purple, because why not? But make sure to kind of keep track of sig figs. Yep. That's not really a very pretty keep track, is it? That's not much better, but oh well. We're going to see that you're only going to round at the very end. So once you do your last operation, that's when you're going to round. But it is important that we keep track of where our sig figs are uh, before we round. And let's do a couple of examples uh, so we can see what that's going to look like. Uh, if we were to take 2.62 times 1.4, uh, plus ten point sixty one. Whatever, I don't know what this is going to be. There you go, you've got Dominique who's going to work with you. Awesome. All right, so order of operations tells us that we've got to do the multiplication first. So 2.62 times 1.4, this number there we go, um, we're going to see is that's the number you get from your calculator uh, when you plug in those numbers. However, the rule for multiplication, remember, is we want to look at how many sig figs our number should have. This has three sig figs. This has two sig figs. So technically, we want to indicate to ourselves that this number, the combined, the 3.668, is only significant to that uh, second sig fig. But we are not going to round it to 3.7. We're going to keep it as 3.668. But we're going to remember that that number has two sig figs. That makes it easy. It's just Dominique. Awesome. So when we then go to add, 
10.61 plus 3.668. We have to remember that this 6 is this, the least significant one. The 10, of course, is already, you know, it has its own thing. So that's where this pesky 6 comes in. That's really ugly. Let me just get rid of that line. But uh, that's where that comes from. So this number here, I'm out of fun colors. No, light blue. I still have light blue. Okay. This number is technically only significant to the tenths place. So when we uh, do our um, addition subtraction rounding, when we do this, we get eight, seven, two, four, one. We are going to have to round it appropriately. So we're gonna look at the next one. Uh, and in doing so, we get 14.3. Isn't that exciting? How utterly fun. Let's see, I can do this. No, that's, that's so, so ugly. That's supposed to be an emoji. I'm not very good at drawing. This sort of thing is just gonna take practice. Um, but you will get there. Don't worry, you will get there. With this, it's important that we kind of just, we have to keep track of our sig figs, but we can't round right away. Um, if you do round, you're gonna introduce error into your uh, calculations. Uh, sometimes that error will be not so important. Uh, sometimes it will be very important. So um, it's best to just kind of avoid it uh, at kind of any cost here. So when we are combining rules, you just follow the order of operations, but you do not round until the very end. So it is super dumb. I agree. But that's the way it is. Uh, because this number technically would have been rounded to two sig figs. Because if we were done with this uh, thing, ah, aha, so big Taiwan here. Uh, multiplication and division is the only time we worry about the uh, number of sig figs. So uh, that's where that we, we have that significant to the tenths place thing. The reason that that number is only significant to the tenths place is because we only have two sig figs for it. That's the same number that I'm talking about. Um, you're absolutely right. The smallest number of sig figs is two. Uh, and that would matter if we were multiplying the whole thing. But we're only multiplying the first two numbers together. That's when we worry about the two being significant. Uh, and that's why we're going to kind of indicate that by kind of for me, I, I underline it. Yeah, and then we add after. So it's always the last operation you do that determines your rounding. So because we are adding last here, we're going to be doing uh, our kind of rounding based on addition subtraction rules. But we still need to keep those multiplication rules uh, with the uh, previous part. We're just going to be doing this for the rest of the time today because I totally get that this is... Uh, that. So, um, man, that's such an ugly version of what I intended to draw. Oh, well. So, let's do some more. Because uh, I think the more you do, the uh, more sense it'll kind of make. Let's do the same numbers, why not? Let's, let's do this. But let's switch the operations around. Uh, it depends. So uh, 
in this case, uh, we will do our multiplication first for the first problem we did right here. Um, and then we're going to do our addition and subtraction. Uh, you only apply the multiplication division rules for things you are multiplying and dividing. Uh, because that's going first, that's why we underline that 6 there. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about conversion factors tomorrow. That's going to be for our uh, this the other homework that we have. We're going to go over unit conversions. Um, we're going to apply our multiplication division rules for this stuff in blue. And then we're going to worry about our addition subtraction rules for this stuff in black. Um, the blue stuff we're doing first because order of operations tells us that we're going to do the multiplication before the addition. Uh, and then we would round accordingly. Let's look at this next example, and we're going to see that we're going to have to do our addition first. We're going to look at the sig figs for the addition, uh, and then we're going to do our multiplication uh, based on that. Let's just see it in another example, and I think it's going to kind of be making a little bit more sense uh, for us. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if we were to add these up, 2.62, 1.4, 2, 0, 4, doing this, We know normally at this point we would be rounding this. If we were done, we would say, okay, it's 4.0, we're done, hooray. What we want to, to look at here is that we are going to keep this 4.02, but we are going to remember that this only has two sig figs. That's the part on the left. Those, we have two sig figs in this number. When we do our multiplication, we are not going to put 4.0. We are going to keep that pesky 2 there. But we are going to remember that this number only has two sig figs. We're not going to round, but we're going to know it has two sig figs. This number, of course, has four sig figs. So when we multiply them together, Four point oh two times ten point sixty one. Yeah, so don't round up uh, until the very end. If you do this multiplication, you get forty two point six five two two, whatever some crazy number. We need this to only have two sig figs. So we're going to round based on the six there, and so this answer will be forty three. As awful as this is. So I'm kind of using this underline thing to kind of keep track of where my sig figs are, but I do not round right away. I'm not going to say it's 4.0 multiplied by this 10.61. We're going to keep that silly 2 there uh, just to maintain the accuracy of our answer. Uh, and of course, our, our final answer here will have two sig figs uh, because the last order we do is. Yeah, but that two is not significant. Yeah, exactly. Just throw all the, the rules about addition you knew um, out the window. So uh, if we take a look, uh, Big Taiwan. Um, for our um, addition part here, the 4 and the 0 are significant, and the 2 is not. The 2 normally, if we were done, we would just round it away. It's gone. We don't have to think about it anymore. It's just 4.0. Hooray, that's our GPA. We're, we're out of, you know, we're done. Um, but we have to keep it along. We just don't want to round early, because the more you round, the less accurate your answer is going to be. Uh, so that's that's the pesky part. That's why this is tricky uh, when you combine them, uh, is because you have to worry about different rules. Uh, you would be using 4.02. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I guess technically the word is some, but I think you, you yeah, you're, you're fine there. So, yeah. Isn't this just disgusting? Let's do one more. Uh, and, you know, the more, again, the more you do, the more this kind of will make sense. <laughs> if only we could have that emoji in here, right? <clears throat> All right, let's do this nonsense. I don't know why I put parentheses. They're totally not necessary here. But whatever, they're here. So we have mixed order of operations, right? We have two multiplication divisions to deal with, and then we have an addition uh, to deal with. So let's go ahead and just do the numbers first. 2.894. If we do this math, we get for the first number 0 0.908716. We'll deal with that in just a second. Let's do the second one, 104 divided by 62.4. And we get 1.666. Six 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 seven, some crazy number. Obviously, these are not the numbers we're gonna, or we actually will be adding these numbers together, but we have to look at our sig figs first, because now we're going into a different operation. So uh, I guess we'll use green for this. We have three sig figs, four sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. So between this, we're going to have three sig figs for this number. Um, because the second number has both of them as three, we would keep three there as well. Oops. Just going to underline the last one. So technically, we are going to add these numbers together as is. Oh my gosh, 1.6666. I'm just going to put that because who cares about all those pesky sixes. When we uh, look at where our sig figs were, that's where those sig figs end up. I think that's, that's what's going to be the right answer, Big Taiwan. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and see here. I don't want to add all this crap up, but we got to 6, no, 7, 6, 2, Eight, three, five, seven, five, two. Oh, I did it. Uh, yeah, and it looks like you do have the right answer. So we're going to draw our line. I'm out of colors once again. I just keep changing them. Always look at your least significant digit. That's going to be the six there. That's I'm gonna. That's the one I'm looking at. That six. And you're absolutely correct. We are gonna keep these and round based off that. Uh, so indeed, we are going to get two point five eight. Now it just so happens that, that that number is three sig figs. Don't worry about the number of sig figs here, because our last order thing is addition. Uh, we worry about the addition rules. Sometimes they just mean, you know, end up being the same thing, but uh, coincidence in this case. Alrighty. How exciting. Um, fun. I have a resource for you. <laughs> Oops. Google it if you want more practice, but you have a homework assignment that'll be on this as well, so you'll have plenty of practice there. We'll probably do a few more at the start tomorrow uh, before we start talking about unit conversions. Um, 
the just so you know the um unit conversion worksheet's probably not going to be due this week uh just depends how far we get tomorrow um we'll see uh however the sig fig one will for sure be be due uh, i'll double check that the due date is put there so you guys can have that and it'll show up as like to do for you guys all right so um come tomorrow with questions or just throw them in discord uh and i'll see you tomorrow otherwise have a nice day